Good morning, Friday, April 24th. So here we go. Once again, any questions, post them in the chat. I'll get to them once we're done. Today, though, what I wanted to do was I wanted to take the stuff that we've gone over and I wanted to tie it together. Like, we've talked about natural selection working and then a little bit of the advanced genetics form of it, the inheritance and how that alters. We talked about our forms of natural selection, directional, stabilizing, and disruptive. Then, yesterday, we went over the isolation mechanisms. So the isolation mechanisms, uh, geographic behavioral, or temporal. Now what I want to do today is I want to try to weave that together into one thing that makes sense. And if you guys take a look for today in Schoology, you're going to see that we've got it set up kind of like this, right? We've got the slideshow that we're going to go over first, the bacterial resistance. Then I have two videos for you, one from It's Okay to Be Smart, and the other one was just a random one that I picked up um, about how this kind of happened. It'll rehash a lot of the stuff that we talk about with their own examples. Then I've got a bonus one down here. It's labeled Extra Fun, PBS Eon's Snake Debate. If you guys have time and the interest, check it out. It's kind of cool to see because I talked about how the fossil record is our source for a lot of information on evolution and how one species has transitioned into another one. But this video goes over exactly how much of it is still really a science that's being worked on and the different pieces of information that the two different groups have and the arguments that they're making because this is not settled. Snakes are a really interesting uh, slinky little question mark that we can't fully explain just yet. So I really suggest that one if you guys um, if you guys have the time. As a matter of fact, this antibacterial resistance one, make that one optional. As long as you watch the It's Okay to Be Smart Superbugs one, you'll get the idea. All right, so I decided the best way to show you the example and hopefully to make all of this more concrete for how it actually exists would be to go through something that everybody's aware of. And for this example, here you see the evolutionary path of an elephant, you know, and we could go through each one of these steps and try to determine how is the gene pool changing, how are the alleles changing due to natural selection, picking the most fit adaptations to be passed on to the offspring from the more successful organisms. And all of that's fine, but, but let's get into something that's a little bit more direct. So I want to talk today about bacterial resistance. This is a major issue that we've had recently. So here we have a bacterial colony. That's what all of these little purpley dudes are with their little flagella and cilia sticking out, all right? And we're going to add antibiotics because this particular group of bacteria have made you sick. They've come into your body, they're disrupting your homeostasis, you're not feeling good, you go to the doctor, the doctor gives you antibiotics, you take the pill. Well, let's take a look at how this works. Now, all living things have variation. Hopefully you guys remember that, just like looking across the classroom. Everybody's not the same. So here we have all the bacteria. The plain purple ones without a dot are what we call our normal all of the little white dots, all of the orange dots, all of the red dots, those are variations. Those are bacteria with a mutation that has affected how they do things and how well they can do things. All right, should be pretty straightforward. Now, this, these antibiotics are going to come in and they kill off all the normal bacteria. Those are the susceptible ones. But all of our mutants here have some little trait that's made them a little bit more resistant, a little bit stronger to it. Okay, so now they survive. Now, what will these bacteria do once they survive the treatment? Well, they're not dead, so they're going to make more. They're going to procreate reproduce. So now you see we're back to the same number of bacteria that we started with, but now all of them are different mutants. We've got a lot more whites, a lot more oranges, a lot more reds, none of the old normal ones because they were killed off. All right, now you start to feel bad again. You go back to the doctor. 
Now you take a stronger antibiotic. So we've stepped up. You started with penicillin, that isn't doing it. Now you're up to ampicillin. All right, same thing's kind of going to happen again. So now this stronger antibiotic was able to kill off all of the white dot mutations. They were now the weakest, they were susceptible to it, and so they're gone. But now our survivors are going to be the orange and the red. Well, you take even stronger antibiotics. So now you started with penicillin, you went up to ampicillin, and now you've got to go on to like tetrachloride, you know, something that's much, much stronger. All right, take a guess. What else is going to happen here? Well, that kills the orange, but it leaves the red. Now, when the red reproduce, we now have a bacteria that is resistant to all three of those antibiotics that have already been used on it. Now, let's take a look inside. That means that our starting population had a lot of different variety to it, right? The allele frequencies, the genes that existed were varied. We had 13% of them with the red mutation, 22% with that gray-white one, 9% had the orange mutation, and 57% of the population was the normal without any mutation. But now, with the antibiotics, natural selection has happened. The weak have been eliminated. The most fit for this environment with antibiotics were selected. They survived reproduced and passed on that trait that made them successful so we change genetically from all of these different percentages here to just one and what we have bred now is a species of bacteria that genetically is going to be able to resist all those antibiotics that have been used against it now this may sound kind of crazy but this is real this is a very real thing. Now, which form of natural selection did we see happen here? Was it disruptive selection, where the old good trait is gone and now there are two successful traits? Was it stabilizing selection, where the old good trait was the only good trait and all of those other variations were selected against? Or was it directional selection, where the old trait was no good and this new trait is now high fitness, so everything shifts over. This great big one was supposed to float in when I click, not just sit here, but that was directional selection. You know, we saw the old population die off as everything moved over to this new population that could survive in that current environment. Now, where does this come important for us? Well, a lot of places that we can start to think of or take a look at, and one of the worst ones right now that you can think of as our antibiotic-resistant bacteria is going to be something like MRSA. All right, These are the skin infections that can happen if you catch MRSA. Previously, MRSA was actually one of the big concerns for a lot of school districts. I remember a couple years ago, I forget whether it was Sherburne or Oxford or, or where it was around here, but one of the neighboring school districts actually found MRSA in their ventilation. And they closed their whole school down for two days so that everything could get scrubbed and disinfected. Because without the ability to use antibiotics to help treat it, this can become far more dangerous. It's no longer an issue of go see a doctor. It's an issue of, boy, I hope your immune system figures it out before you die. Now, that's because MRSA has evolved from decades and decades where people do not do the things that they should. All right, we've been giving antibiotics out like candy. You don't feel good? Here's some antibiotics. Will the antibiotics help you? Not if it's a virus, but, you know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. And at the very least, it'll stop your complaining because you'll think that you've got medicine that you think will be working and helping you, and so, to some degree, it will. It's a placebo effect. We just handed this stuff out like crazy. Case in point. Ah, what's going on here? Well then, 
I'll move that over there. Case in point, when I was in college, if you ended up going down to the health clinic for any sort of issue that you had, um, it didn't matter what you went in for. It Not at all. You would get this brown paper bag that they would just hand to you. And it had a bottle of cough syrup, tissues, some disinfecting wipes, and a bottle of penicillin. If you were a guy. If you were a girl, it also had a pregnancy test. Because at least in college, that's what they assume every weirdness is. Um, but that was just it. Everybody got the same bag. Why were they handing out antibiotics like that? It wasn't going to help. And in fact, now we find out the amount of damage that it's actually done. Because we have a situation where we have pushed the evolution of this to the point where uh, it's just massive. It is unbelievable. All right, we have orchestrated this. And then people also don't use their antibiotics. They use them till they feel better. But as soon as you start to feel better, you put the bottle of antibiotics into a cabinet and you forget about it until about a year later when you're like, oh, these are old, and you throw them out. Um, that's a problem. If you get a bottle of antibiotics and it says three refills, you should use it on schedule when it empties out, get it refilled up, continue the schedule. When it empties out, get it refilled up, and then finish that bottle. You should use all three of them. What that does, and the reason they prescribe it that way, is that guarantees that if you use it right, you will have such a high antibody load that nothing, no resistant bacteria can survive it. It'll just be too strong. But we don't do that. We only use it till we feel better, which means we literally use it just long enough to select against most of them and leave the strongest ones. So here we have the causes. Not taking the antibiotics the way they should. Over-prescribing. And then it goes further. We've been talking about this recently now thanks to COVID. Infection control and hygiene. Lack of testing. Because if you can't test to tell what the difference is, you just hand out an antibiotic because it might work. 50% chance is bacteria, 50% chance is viral. But here's the last one, something you may not realize, but we dump a huge amount of antibiotics into agriculture every year. How much? Well, here's a pie graph that breaks down all of the antibiotic use in 2015, so it's a little bit outdated by the amount of antibiotic. And you can see livestock accounts for more than 75% of all the antibiotics that we use in the U.S. This is only for the U.S. Other countries will be different. This is breeding those resistant bacteria too. It's forcing their evolution fast moving way quicker than we do. How fast something can evolve is entirely related to how quickly it reproduces. And bacteria reproduce every 20 minutes. So to go through the same number of generations that bacteria experience in a night would be most of human history. So the amount of evolution that our species has seen since we started recording time, caveman paintings, is the amount of evolution that bacteria experience in a single evening. It is staggering to think about. So now it starts to make some sense why we can see this happen so much, right? We have all these bacteria. Some of them are resistant. Antibiotics kill everything but the resistant ones. The resistant ones then reproduce, passing on that trait. And then bacteria are also rough because they're cooperative. And they will share the trait that made them resistant with non-resistant bacteria that are nearby. Crazy, huh? We have created this problem. We didn't really understand the science behind it, but now it's a thing. 
Right now, there are dozens of antibiotic-resistant strains of bacteria that mostly live in hospitals. It's one of the major reasons that in the last decade, a lot of hospitals have started doing as much outpatient stuff as they can, where they treat you and then they send you home. Because they know that there are untreatable bacteria that are in their facility somewhere. They don't want you staying there for a long time because that increases the odds that you're going to get one of them. This is how evolution works for all things. The only difference is this one happens on such a scale that we can actually see the changes occurring. So, hopefully that example helps to make it a little bit more clear on exactly how natural selection is changing the genomes in order to change the species. Any questions, comments, anything like that, please shoot me a message on Schoology. Other than that, look in the Schoology folder and you will find the It's Okay to Be Smart video right up over there. The second one, um, the antibacterial resistance, uh, watch that one if you've got time. And then the last one, once again, I'm not actually going to assign it, but it's really pretty cool to see exactly how the two different sides of the debate on how something evolved, uh, how they're working, what their arguments are, what their evidences are. So I really suggest that one, the snake debate. That could be a lot I mean, if you like this stuff, it'll be really fun. Monday, I'm going to give you guys a bit of an assignment. Basically, I'm going to post a series of, I think it's eight different stories. For each story, I'm going to ask you guys to identify what form of selection is the population experiencing, directional, stabilizing, or disruptive, but I'm also going to ask you guys then to identify which form of isolation mechanism are we seeing occurring there in order to cause the species to diverge. Is it geographic, behavioral, or temporal? So we'll get some practice in with those. We're looking at our evolution test at the end of next week. So that would be sometime in the neighborhood of the 1st of May. So start preparing for it. I posted a gigantic evolution packet earlier this week. You can grab that, start looking through it, practicing some questions, taking a look at some of the pictures and the terms. Uh, it can prove very useful. Other than that, have a great weekend. Stay healthy, stay safe.